Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to create something like this, a monogram. I think these things are called a monogram, which you can make as a posters to print for the nurseries and things like that. Okay, so let's begin. Go to your Illustrator, click on File and New. Let's make this 8 into 10 inches. If you cannot see inches here, just make sure you have clicked on inches. And then artboards, let's keep it one, no bleed for now. And then in advanced options, let's keep it as 300 ppi and I'm going to make it CMYK and then click create. So our first task is to make the pattern for this monogram. So let's just do that. We'll pick our colors first. So I have something from the Adobe library, um, Adobe color library. So this is the color theme that I'm going to be using for this. It's some Japanese name, so I don't know how we're going to find that on Adobe Color. But don't worry, I'll leave the hex codes in the description box. You can go and pick it up. So now to make the pattern, I will choose the brush tool, the paint brush tool. And next I'm going to go ahead and select a new brush. So if you cannot see this around here, you can go to window and brushes and then it will pop up a window from where you can select things. Okay, let me just go here. I'm going to click on that and scroll and choose this one. This is charcoal feather. Let me just check that. Okay, cool. It sounds fine. Next, we're going to change the size. So click on this and I'll keep it around 40. Let me just check that. Okay, this seems perfect. You can keep it a little smaller as well. Let's check 18. Yeah, this should be fine uh, for now. So let's just keep it at that. And next, we're going to choose a color. So if you come here and if you choose a color, you can see that it does not take these colors. For that, that's because you have to choose it from here. Uh, how do we get these colors over here? That's in our swatches. So one thing you can do is you can just click on this swatch right here and right click and say add to swatches. And it's going to add all the colors to the swatches. So now if I go here, I can see all the colors over here. So you just click on that and then you must be on your brush tool, paint brush tool and make a line like this. I think I'm going to increase the size of the brush uh, probably up to 40 because it's not giving me the kind of effect that I want. Okay, next it's time to choose a different color. Make sure it overlaps a little bit, the previous color, otherwise our shadow effect is not going to work. Let's just put something on the top here. So now this one, I put it in the end, this whole chunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and transcend it to back because otherwise the shadows will look really weird. To do that, I just selected it holding my shift key down and I'll press command shift and open square bracket to send it back. You can also do right click, transform, I mean arrange, send to back. So we have all our colors ready and now it's time to add some shadows. So I'm going to click and drag to select everything. And I'll go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. Now it's set to Multiply, 75%, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.07. I'm going to click on Preview, just to make sure. It takes a bit of time because there are a lot of strokes in here. Okay, so we have our things ready and click OK. This is how it looks for now. But you can also edit this. For example, if you go click on this and say Command, Shift, and Close Square Bracket, it's going to pop up in the front. So you can edit these however you like. Okay, so we have our um, things ready. Now I'm going to group them together. So click and drag and press Command G to group them. Okay, so we are pattern ready, but I think I want to give something darker down here because if I'm going to keep the page as white uh, and this is white as well, so that kind of it is not really nice and visible. So I'll go back to my paintbrush tool here and select the charcoal. Okay, and then uh, I'll go here and select, I think it was 40, select the color and then paint it up here. Okay, so this is fine, but then again, we need to add our shadow. So click on this, go to your effect, stylize, drop shadow. Your previous setting is usually in here, so you just have to click okay. 
Okay, so our pattern is ready. Now it's time to add some text. So go to your text tool and click. And then uh, we're going to use alphabet A. But as you can see, this is not the one that I used in my example that I showed. So I'm going to go back and try to use the same thing. You can use any font that you want. Go to your selection tool. You can press V on your keyboard. Not when you're in the text mode. You have to click on that. Okay, let's go back and select something. Just make sure you choose a font which is not something like this because this, the width is really, really low. Problem is that when you try to apply this to this one, you cannot see a pattern in the text because the space is way too little. So what you can do is you should always try to choose something which is like really thick and fat. And I'm just going to go for this one. It is HWT Arts. It's a free font. I think it comes with the system. I, I don't know. You can just try and find it. Just going to click on that and click and drag. So as you can see, it does not cover the whole thing. You can increase the size here by making this as 900. Uh, don't worry about the size. I know this is covering the whole page right now, but we're going to reduce the size of the font once we are done with putting the pattern on it. Okay, so we have a font ready. So we're just going to click and drag and select everything right click make clipping mask now it's time to reduce this so that it fits the page so click on this hold your shift key down click and drag to make it smaller it takes time because it has to apply everything again on a smaller scale so it's going to take some time all right now we're going to place this in the center to do that you can go to if you cannot see this over here go to window and then align so just go to center It'll take time again to do that. And you can press center here as well so that it comes to the center of the page. But we don't want it like completely center. And as you can see, this is a little tiny for this. So what I'm going to do is hold your shift key down, hold your option key down, click and drag. So holding your option key down, make sure that you are stretching the image or the uh, vector or whatever you have on your canvas from the center. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit. I've been holding my shift key so that, you know, it does not move much. Now it's time to add some colors on the side, uh, like I showed you right here. So for this, we'll go back to our uh, paintbrush tool. And then we have the same setting and we're going to change it to 20. And then color, uh, you could make it anything. You could make it green or you could make it pink. Uh, it really depends on how you like it. Oh, this is too small. So I'm just going to change it back to 40 and I'm going to make this dark, this one. The longer you drag this thing, the nicer it is. So let's just drag some of it like that. You can actually change the color, um, probably make it pink and then uh, try to put in some color as well like this. We have this ready. Now it's time to put some text. Go back to your text tool, click. It's going to go up to the previous one. But I've used something called as, I think, Melinda. I'll, I'll just try Melinda or breathtaking, breathtaking probably. And I'll reduce the size to 100, let's see. So I'm going to double click and type it as Eliza. If you want to put it in center, you can go back to, you know, window and align and then click center. You can choose any font that you want. Uh, I can go back and choose something like this. This looks pretty nice, I guess. So I'm just going to do that. Now it looks a little empty still. So I'm just going to put some circles in here um, just to make it a little peppy. Hold your shift key down and click and drag. And we can choose some color here. As you can see, it's a little above the text. We're going to put it back. So come on, open bracket. So it just goes back one step. So let's make a few more circles here, a tiny, tiny ones. So as you can see, I made something very similar, but I put in a little color over here. So if you want, you can still do that. Okay, something like this. But then again, it's about the text. So go back to your selection tool, click and control open bracket till you go back to the text or you can just click on the text and press command shift close bracket and then brings it to the front okay so this is basically how you make this and once you have this ready uh, you can click on file and um, export and export as and you can export it as a png just select png from the drop down menu don't forget to hit the use artboards option here so that you can cut off all the extra things and just export the one on the artboard. And let's make this as class.png. 
and click export. I want to keep it at 300 ppi so that you have really good results when you print it and transparent background. You can change it to white because we didn't set a rectangle with a white background there so it, you have that option. So click on that and click OK. Now it's time to go and check our printable. So I'll just show you the difference between what I made earlier and what you, uh, what I made with you guys. So this is my previous thing. Bring it back up. Okay, previous thing. And this is the one which I made with you guys. So as you can see, I use the same exact font for both these things. But what I did here was I kind of increased the thickness of this. But for example, I'll just show you. If you're not happy with this, you can click on this click and say release clipping mask and then it's going to release it. So what I did was I just clicked on this and I increased the size like this and then moved it and then made a clipping mask out of this. So that's how basically you got a thicker fatter alphabet over here and not so thick and fat alphabet over here. So because I felt this font looks much better like this, um, it's totally up to you guys. You can modify the font however you want, but make sure when you're making something like a series from A to Z, you need to remember what was the, how much did you actually expand the font. So to do that, it's not that difficult. So if you click on your font and if you go to transform, if you cannot see this here, go to window and then transform. If you click on this, you can see the width and the height of the alphabet. Just make sure you copy it down and use the same setting for all of the phone, all of the alphabets that you use in that series so that there's some kind of consistency. Thanks for watching and I do hope you check out my other tutorials. And if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Do check out my Instagram. Um, that's a different kind of an Instagram profile I have because I am really into uh, traditional art like painting and digital art as well. So I try to post more art related stuff on my Instagram. But do check it out and if you like it, give me a follow. I'll be really happy. And if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button and also the subscribe button if you're new here. Until next time, uh, see you. Bye.